All right, so I am pulling this new kind of textured mushroom out because I feel like I need it in some aspect, maybe on the top of the head, maybe on the tip of the tail, maybe on the top of each eye, you know, just to, to give it a little something more. Yeah, I think I'll probably go on the tail. So I try not to zoom in more than 200%. Because then you can just be so picky that you're not actually making good decisions anymore. You're just um, losing time. So do be mindful of how much you're zoomed in on something. And obviously it's easier to cut out something that's large than something that's small. But also don't let yourself just try to make everything perfect if it doesn't actually matter to the end product. So here's the problem with magnetic lasso. You always have to finish your selection after. And I'm going to go ahead and put a feather of two pixels on that as well. And if it misses a slight curve, I'm going to just let it set its curve. Because the magnetic lasso works much better on these kind of curvy organic surfaces than it does on something like uh, skyscrapers at the edge of a horizon, which has lots of sharp turns. The one thing this is not very good at are those really sharp V's. But then once I get enough, I can cut it out pretty quickly. Ah. All right, I'm going to go back to the quick selection. What's nice about that is it just adds. And I'm going to go ahead and just let it add, let it add, let it add. And then I can hold down minus and subtract from it if it makes a mistake. Now the problem with the quick selection tool is it always leaves a little bit of a debris behind. A little ghost trail that needs to be cleaned up. So this is the grunt work. If, if we were working in a... Um, at like Industrial Lights and Magic, and we are compositing a scene for, for the next Star Wars movies, for instance, the, the lowest ranking digital artist in the studio would have to do all the masking. So they, would, they would break up the components of like the spaceships on the green screens and stuff, and they would create layer masks for them, which are basically stencils that have the selection in them nice and clean, like a vector. So all this careful selecting has to be done at some point by someone. It's just, we're doing it all ourselves. But it also shows how important the skills are. And who knows, maybe you're just born to do careful selections. You find it meditative. It's a, a needed skill in digital imaging. So 
And as you can see, Photoshop uses as many kind of wrecking, um, what's the term? Uses as many algorithms as, as it can to recognize edges. And it's always trying to improve them, but it still is always going to take the individual artist to make these fine adjustments when it comes to refining the work for high resolution output whether that's a movie or whatever else. All right, so let's take it like this. I'll show you how we can clean up everything else in one step a little bit later. So I know I'm leaving some debris around still, but that's definitely gonna give me the impression I want. So now, how do I wanna use it on the tail? I want it to be kind of like this, this decoy lure. So I'm using the stem of the mushroom for the tail and the cap of the mushroom is kind of the, the showpiece of this. So I can shrink it down, which tightens all of those erasing selections I made though it loses resolution when I shrink it. Yeah, I think that's, it's like the false head. That's what I'm looking for. So about that size. And this gives me some interesting textures to have to blend in, which is something I wanna show you in refining. So I'm just gonna take out these big chunks. And we will move on. Okay, so more cleaning up edges. Now I can turn off, well, I can put the, the tails together, right? So how do I group them? I select both layers that make up the tail and I click on the folder icon at the bottom of the, the layers window and I can label it tail assets and I'll give it a color green. All right. So now all of those are together. And if I wanted to, I can then adjust them together in, in various ways. I can even, let's see, let me distort. Skew down. No. Nah. Yeah, I think that helps just a little bit. Okay, now I have this strong color. I have all these things. I need to clean up the legs so I can turn off a lot of the other stuff. I'll just keep that on and the legs on. And now I'm going to go to auto select by layer instead of group. Actually, yeah, I don't need much. So first I'm gonna select from the background here. I'm gonna go ahead and use the regular lasso tool with a two pixel feather. And I'm not even zoomed in. I'm actually zoomed out a little bit. But here I can kind of carve and make my own shapes for that, that forearm because the head is well in front of that leg, I don't need to cut out more than that. Now if I use the move tool, I can click on, on this one. And here's a good example of where I might make my own edges. And because this, the edges of this are soft focused, by creating my own edges with just a two pixel feather, it will make everything seem sharper. But even the bottom of the feet, I need to select carefully because our goal for this project is to have a clean kind of sticker of the creature. So we need all the edges to be really considered.
but just like you could do it with your own rocks in the landscape or create your own mountain, feel free to kind of cut into your reference and find your own shapes. We are not a slave to the reference. Especially if we're feathering our selection as we go. It also is a good time to just tweak it a little bit. Play with your your settings, your transforming. You can warp. Now that you have a better sense of the overall anatomy, you can make it fit into what you want. You might even push that layer behind, right? And then go back to this layer and clean up this transition. Find my own edge. Yeah, I can work with that. So that gives me a way of, of approaching the rest. Because now how do I make this work? Well, I select this layer, and I'm going to use the burn tool to create the shadows first on the highlights, you know, behind it. Again, at an exposure of less than 20, it's such a strong tool. And then on the underside of it, so it really looks like it's a foot. And then to the mid-tones at the base of it. And then I go to this layer. I'm going to burn the highlight because it's underneath the body. And then burn the mid-tones a little bit. So it really looks underneath the body. And a shortcut to get back to the Move tool is just hold down Command. And that will help you select your layers. And then if I need to, I'm going to desaturate using the Sponge tool. Take some of that color down that the burning caused. All right, so I've got my first foot. And now, armed with that knowledge, I can go in to the rest and just not even really zoomed in not zoomed in at all. Go in and make my shapes, cut the legs out that I need, be confident about it. Actually, Remember that you can alter your selections by holding down Option to subtract from them, holding down Shift to add to them. So it's rarely worth it to just bail on a selection when you can always tweak it. Using Shift and Option. And remember how I focused on the head and the eyes first, because that's the main focal point. The legs and the feet are going to be kind of the last focal point of this creature. 